this episode of The Dog Show, I had the pleasure of welcoming back Robert Cabral. Robert originally appeared in episode 3, and he's a canine behaviour specialist whose work has helped dogs all over the world. His theories and techniques are used by animal shelters throughout the United States to deal with difficult dogs and help them become more adoptable. He's also considered one of the top dog trainers anywhere. In this interview, we discuss whether teaching a dog to lay down is important, how to teach your dog to lay down, and how long it takes. Robert, welcome back to The Dog Show. Thanks for coming on. Well, thanks for having me. Well, it's always a pleasure. Really excited to have a chat to you. It's taken me a year, but I've, conv- uh, I've convinced you to come back on again. Uh, you were on <laughs> originally in episode number three, which is way back oh, in the okay. beginning. <laughs> well, we're, what, what episode are we on now? This, well, I'm not sure which episode this will be, but I think as we're uh-huh. recording this, I've published 56 episodes, so we're a fair way along. Wow. Yeah. You've done better than me. <laughs> I don't think that's true. You've got thousands of videos, I think. <laughs> well, um, not not, pod, not interviews. Okay, okay. Um, well, I'm not an expert like you, so I need to find experts to, to actually create my content. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm happy to do it. Anyway, we're going to dive straight into the content today. If anyone wants to find out more about your process for training dogs and a little bit more about your history, they can check out episode three or go straight to your YouTube channel, which has got tons of cool videos. Uh, but today we're going to talk about how to teach a dog to lay down, which you've done a huge amount of work in. So just before we get into the how-to, wh- why is it important mm-hmm. to teach a dog to lay down? Is it, is it an important command for people to, to teach their dogs at a young age? Or Yeah, I mean, anything you teach a dog at a young age is always going to be easier for the dog to reflect back on. Muscle memory is the number one thing you're going to rely on when you teach a dog a behavior. And the earlier on it's taught, it's kind of like riding a bicycle for us. So if we learn how to ride a bicycle when we're very young, our motor skills are developing. And if they develop into something that we're using, for example, athletics, then it's very easy. If we try to learn to ride a bicycle at, at 30 or 40, it, it's very hard because, you know, it's like learning to walk is the perfect example. Um, they say it's almost impossible for an adult to learn how to walk if they didn't have the skill before. And even just retraining yourself to walk It's very, very difficult on you because your motor skills are kind of set in their ways. Um, When the neurons are kind of, the the synapses are firing and everything is kind of connecting, it's real easy for a creature to to learn a new movement. So anything, whether it's sit down or, or, you know, even close healing or anything like that, very easy for the animal to learn it early on because it becomes part of their natural biomechanics. Okay, and you mentioned sitting down there. I noticed in a couple of your videos, you talk about teaching lay down before sit down is that right why yeah. is that so this the down is a first of all everybody teaches the dog sit first i've, I've mm. rarely seen a dog that couldn't sit or even couldn't do it on command because everybody says sit and the dog sits and sit and the dog sits because people don't teach a dog down because it's kind of out of the way they teach the dog to sit then they pat him on the head and they use that as kind of a, a starting point for the relationship with the dog The reason I teach a dog to lie down first is because I want them to know how to lie straight down without starting in a sit. The common methodology for teaching a down is to teach a dog sit and then down. So the dog almost mentally and physically has to create a movement before they can go down. My dogs fold into a down. When I teach a dog down, the dog is standing and the dog rocks back and goes into a down. And I think it's a very beautiful movement. It's a very easy movement biomechanically for the dog. And the dog should know how to just lie down without having to have a, pref- a, a, a primary movement before that comes. Do you think it actually makes it harder if the if dog already knows the sit command to actually then do the lay, lie down command or not so much? The, the proper way, yes. In other words, if the dog is very set on sit. In other words, a lot of dogs will come up to you and the first thing they do is sit because that's where they get their reward. They get their pat on the head. That's where they get their cookies and stuff like that. So um, if they know that they go into that and then what they do is they 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 crawl into a down. So they're sitting like this and then they kind of crawl into a down where if a dog is standing, the dog can just fold and lie down. Um, as far as if you were going to do something with more competitive obedience, you would want the dog to have that that technique. Also, if you wanted your dog to react very, very quickly to a down, in other words, you'll see on some of the videos um, on my channel where I'll have a dog running away from me or running towards me and I'll say down. 
or the German word Platz, and the dog will just lie, just bury their elbows in and, and down. And that looks beautiful. <clears throat> it's very, very effective. And uh, it can only really be done if the dog knows I don't need to do something before I do what you're asking me to do. Do you use German to, t- to train dogs? Because I know you used to live in Germany, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, German was my first language. So oh, right. people always think it's very exotic, right? But, but that, I, that, I speak, that I speak German to my dogs. And they think, oh, these, his dogs are protection trained. Uh, and well, they are. But that's not the reason why I chose German. I had a Sharpay that I trained in German as well. It was, just, it was my first language as a child. I think it's a very strong language. I think it's a very good language. I mean, it's very definitely not a romantic language, not the language I talk to my wife in. But um, <laughs> as far as it being a very strong and emphatic um, language with strong enunciation on the, on the words, um, I, I think it works really well with dogs. Would that create complications if you were training a dog in German for then someone to try and use similar commands but using English words? Or is it more about the tone and things like that? It's really about the tone or like I would say the intonation, the way you say the, the words. But um, no, because my dog, my, my wife speaks to them in English and I speak to them in German. It doesn't matter. I mean, they need to learn. OK, plots means down or down means plots. But no, it doesn't. It's kind of like us learning a couple of lang- you know, like, like if I'm talking to somebody who's um, from Mexico, I can say basura or trash. I, I learned that. Right. I don't, I don't have a complete conversational skill in Spanish, but I can certainly pick out a couple of words or Hebrew or or, uh, you know, or whatever Italian, whatever the word is. I can learn those words and say, OK, those that's what that means. And dogs are quite intelligent. You know, we don't give them enough credit for that. So um they're quite intelligent. They can figure things out pretty, pretty simply, as long as they know what, like in other words, they have to know down means lie down, then to associate that plots means down or, or, um, couche means down in French, that it's just an, it's just now an association to a new word. Well, I feel like I've just expanded my, um, German vocabulary by one word from zero to one words. <laughs> <laughs> right. Plots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> which in, which in Yiddish means quite the opposite. Plots means, you know, I'm going to explode. So, so it's always funny when, when cause I've talked, I've right. talked to people to train their dogs in Hebrew. So, and I say plots, I go, oh, no, you can't use plots. So yeah, very, very interesting for, interesting. for a choice of words, what you're going to use. Yeah. Um, okay. So the down command, you mentioned that it's, you know, at a young age, it's always easier to teach teach a dog those things. But why why is it why is it important to teach down? Well, down is a disabling command, right? So in other words, sit is a disabling command, but it's it's very the dog is still kind of poised. Down can be a very relaxed command. In other words, the dog can lie down and not get up. The dog can kind of just settle in a down. Where a sit, they might want to move and go sit over there and then sit over here. Where down, it's I'm down. Like in other words, when you're sitting in a chair, you're probably going to scoot around a little bit. You might move to another area of the house. But if you're in bed and lying down, you're down. So um, the reason we want our dogs to know that is because I would say there's three important things to teach the dog. There's there's the recall, the leave it, and the down, right? Which is a stay essentially. Um, the easiest way to teach the dog to stay is to have them down because it takes a lot of movement for them to get up out of that down as opposed to to get up out of a sit. That makes sense because I guess if they're just staying but they're still standing, then it's mm-hmm. much easier for them to then go again. Whereas right. if, if they're down, I guess, as you said, they're disabled. Well, not disabled, but... <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah. yeah. Well, just, it is. It's a disabling, it's a mm. static command, you know. Um, so you want, you want the dog to know, Hey, down, lie down or plots or whatever it is, um, is the word that, okay, just do not go anywhere. That's exactly where I want you to stay until I release you. Okay. So now for the big question of the interview, how do you train a dog to lay down, lie down? Well, it's, it's, there's, there's several different ways. Some people like to just wait for the dog to do it and then mark the behavior, which I don't, that's, that, that's operant conditioning where the, we're waiting for a dog to do a behavior and the dog does it. And we say, okay, good boy. And we give him a treat or whatever. The easiest way to teach the dog the, to lie down is to take a treat. And, you know, I always use treats for these things because toys are, are not beneficial. The old way is you would just literally step on the, on the leash that was attached to the collar and the dog would feel the pressure and the dog would lie down. The dogs lied down very ugly. You know, it was a very like, a, you know, a, a very sub, not I don't even say the word submissive, but a very cowering type of down. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't very pretty. So 
I like to take a treat, put it at the dog's nose, and then I like to push it from the nose, I would say from the nose to the toes. So the no, if you if a dog is standing up, their nose is about you know a good six inches or so or five inches at least in front of their toes. So you don't want to bring it straight down, but you want to bring it down towards you know towards them. So you actually want the dog to lay back. Right? You don't want the dog to crawl forward. You want the dog to lie back. So if you put that treat from the nose to the toes, and I always use that greater than symbol as an example, um, you're pushing the dog back further. So in other words, the dog's not ever traveling forward. From the second the dog, um, the second that the dog hears the word down, the dog is actually backing up and going away from the position, from the forward drive position. And it just teaches a really nice folding down. In other words, it's very natural for the dog to just fold their legs back, fold their body on top of their legs and to lie down. One trick I noticed you used in, in one of your videos is you kind of kept the treat, and I'm sure anyone that's watching on YouTube could see my hand right now, um, I guess hidden from the dog so they could smell it until they did the, the command that you're wanting them to. Is that is that one tactic you use? Well, there's two there's two aspects to that. that. That is one tactic I use. But when I first train the dog, when I'm luring and shaping the movement, I actually let the dog kind of see it and even lick it a little bit so that the dog will stay engaged. If you if you take it away right away in the very, very first part, of, let's say with a puppy or a very green dog, then the dog becomes kind of confused. Like there's something there, but I can't get it. And they might uh, decide, let me try to offer a behavior, but you're definitely not luring it at that point. Luring it means the dog is kind of engaged in that object, whether it's a treat or whatever, um, all the way until the dog finally gets it. And that's when I would, I would, I would, I would first to start with, I would just lure it. I would just push the treat between their toes, push the treat between their toes, push the treat between their toes. And then as the dog started following that, I would tag a word to it down, down, down. And then as they would do it more, I would put my hand down and say down, they would go down and I go, yes. And I would release the, the treat immediately. Okay. But once the dog is past that phase, past the conditioning phase, the, the, the shaping phase and luring phase, then I would hold the treat here in my hand and l tell the dog down and the dog actually now moves away from my hand and then it's rewarded with it. So it's teaching the dog a couple you know, different things, but a strong down is probably one of the very, very best things you can teach a dog. Okay, so I guess what you're saying, as with anything, it's like just slow progression um, till, till yeah. they've understood the, the command you're teaching them. But how, how long does it take the average person or the average dog to learn well, I mean, just to get the luring and shaping part of it, it's, it's, you know, it can be, I had one dog, some dogs will get it in a couple of minutes, they'll start to understand the lure, right? Now I've had, a, I had one dog that in particular is, is a, you know, favorite case of mine, where for 25 minutes, I just had to lure the dog and the dog wouldn't do it for 25 minutes. And then finally just did it, you know, he just got it. Um, now from there, you now have, have to figure out how long it's going to take the dog to associate the um, the lure to the command and then the command to no treat and when will they do it without a treat? You know, everything I always say, when you're teaching all these basics, it's a six month to a one year window for the dog to be trained on those things, which is why I train multiple things with my dog because I know by the time the dog is about a year to 18 months old, he's gonna have all the basics. And then um, from there, I also work a lot on perfecting him and making him, because I'm looking at a dog from more of a competitive position. I don't compete much anymore, but I still like to have a dog have their technique be perfect. And that's kind of like just my personality, you know. So when I teach people, I say, look, look we can do it, you know, lackadaisically or we can do it perfectly. So why not, why not, you know, aspire to do things perfectly? Do you notice any difference with the learning capability of, of a command such as lie down for the different dog breeds, because I mean, you've got four different dog, oh, sure. dog breeds yourself currently, plus you've worked with, you know, hundreds. Yeah. Yeah. I've worked with just about every breed in the world, um, and every drive, but I would say that, um, right now we have three, we have labs, German Shepherd and Belgian Malinois, but, um, we, our dachshund passed away. So, oh, um, sorry. Sorry to hear that. It, you know, thank you. Yeah. Um, I think I, I can tell you German Shepherds usually learn fast. Maya is a very slow study. Um, very, very different from the average German Shepherd. Goofy is a Malinois. He's a very, very fast learner. And most Malinois I've ever seen are very fast learners. 
Um, in fact, they learn too fast, and that's why a lot of times they can be problematic for people because they just start figuring things out and they become, they outsmart their owners. So um, same with a border collie, that would be the same thing, or an Australian shepherd. Um, Labradors learn at a really nice, normal pace, nice balanced dog, just like, let's say, a, um, a golden retriever or a poodle or something like that. They learn in those same kind of paces. But um, yeah, some dogs are just obstinate. Some dogs just don't get it. And it's not only the breed, although, you know, breeds are bred to be conditioned to be more biddable, to learn things more. And some are learned to be more stubborn, more hard headed if they're going to be used for things like, you know, livestock um, breeding, uh, livestock guarding or, or hard protection, stuff like that. Um, you don't really want them to be that, that biddable or that conditioned. So it just all depends. Okay, so if there, if it takes 15 or 20 minutes or so to learn that initial command, depending on the dog, how often over that first six months to a year that they are really learning the behavior well are you doing? Is it, are you doing this daily? Are you doing it weekly? How often does an owner need to be doing it? I mean, several times a day is always the best, right? I mean, you want the more exposure you give the animal, the, the easier it is, just like with us. I mean, we can go to the gym once a week or we can go to the gym five times a week. Mm. The, your results will vary based on that. But you really need to think of how how much do you want to dedicate to it? You know, even very, very slow um, uh, dedication or training will yield some results. It just depends how how good you want to do it, how professionally you want to do it, how quickly you want the dog to learn and how how well you want the dog to be able to perform. Well, thanks, Robert. I think that's a great overview of teaching a dog to lay down. If anyone wants to find out more about this topic, there's lots more to learn from your channel or your website. So I'm sure they can check that out there. For sure. For sure.